And just to, for an overview, because we do have some new people here today. Got it? Okay. Um, this is a, a free webinar. I call it a webinar that I do the third Wednesday of each month, generally, with a different topic each month. Next month, however, is one of those months that has, on the third Wednesday, happens to be my birthday. And although I usually and many times have worked on my birthday, I made a decision. I don't think so. <laughs> so next month, it's going to be on the 26th. And it's going to be, uh, which is the fourth Wednesday in October. Again, next month, the free webinar is going to be on minding your weight and diet. And it's going to be because I've been asked to do something on weight issues. And so that will be the fourth Wednesday next month. Now that we got a few people here, I always like to start. Ron Queenie, you must be psychic. I was meaning to call you today and ran out of time, but I, I need to talk to you, man. Anyway, it's good to see you. So we got some familiar faces and I have some new faces here. So here's what I'd like for those of you that, that are willing and would like to be seen. Uh, we like to see each other and it's always nice to hear where people are coming to us from. So I'm in Palm Harbor, Florida. Uh, if you didn't already know that, and I am Patty Scott, and I'm going to start uh, just naming names and if you and or whatever the thing is that's the name on your screen. And if oh. you would please go ahead and introduce yourself and just where you're coming to us from, really quickly, since it's a short webinar, we won't go into any other background. But uh, Joe, you want to just tell us your name and where you're from? Sure, Joe Baber, coming in out of Southern Arizona. Southern Arizona. There you go. Yeah. Cool. As or hot, hot probably right now, actually. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Michael. Yes, uh, Palm Bay, Michael Stern uh, and Diana Stern. Uh, my wife is here, too. Um, and um, uh, we're in Palm Bay, Florida, on the on the opposite side of the coast from, from Patty. Beautiful. So you're on the east coast of Florida. That's right. East coast of the country. Hello, mm -hmm. Diana. I'm glad you both made it. Yeah. Wes, you want to go next? Yes, West Rocky zooming from Satellite Beach, 20 minutes from rocket launching. Very good. What was the name of the beach? It was Satellite different. Beach. Satellite, Satellite beach. beach. I don't remember. I don't remember that for some oh, you reason. Can, you can hear the accent. We speak like this in Satellite Beach. No, I thought you were from a different city. I thought it was, yeah. I, there you go. I thought you were from a different town. I don't know why. Oh, well, we'll go to Ron Queenie. Because I know you. Yes. Hello, Patty. Yeah. Hi. Uh, well, I was okay, excited, no excited to see that uh, the link today. So that was that was great. Thank you for the invite. Uh, You're welcome. So Ron, Ron Queenie, Tampa, Florida, and uh, Patty is uh, one of my my early uh, mentors, and um, I'm grateful ah. for, for that. Very nice. Well, thank you for that. And uh, Marsha, hi, Marsha. You want to introduce yourself and where you're coming from? Uh, my name is Marsha. And I don't live that far from you. I live in Wikiwachi, Florida. Famous. I love that name. <laughs> Isn't that a fun name? I never thought. I'd it sounds remember. like a happy name, doesn't it? Oh, we got oh, ASB designs coming in again. Yeah, known for the city of the mermaids. That's right, Wikiwachi. You have someone else coming in under that same company name, uh, ASB Designs, or did she? Oh, yeah. I, oh, I got you both. You're both the same person. Ooh, she's by locating. Look at her. Which one is the, which one's going to talk to us? <laughs> there she is. What's what is your real name? <laughs> My real name is Tony Baumgartner, and I'm a newbie. I Ooh, am goody. Jessica Hansen. In <gasps> Very Minnesota. good. That's right. She said she was going to be putting it out for her students. Well, you have a very nice teacher there, and uh, we're going to talk about her maybe a little bit in, in a minute when I make the announcements. So welcome, Tony. I'm so happy you're here. And Thank where you. are you located? Where? North? Olivia, Minnesota. 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 Oh, I have fond memories of Minnesota. So now who else do we have here? Let's see. Oh, Reisman, I'm still not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right, so please forgive me, but would you like to introduce yourself if you're there? Are you there? Maybe not. Okay, well, you know what? Whoever's here is here. Whoever isn't here yet, maybe they will show up. 
We've got a nice group here and we don't have a lot of time. So this is also considered a chapter meeting. I'm gonna do quick announcements for IACT, International Association of Counselors and Therapists, and also for the Hypnosis Education Association, and then a couple of little small things for my company. But just to let you know, the IACT, and they combine with the International Medical and Dental Hypnotherapy Association. So IACT IMDHA Hypno Expo next year is already set, and it's going to be uh, on May 19th to the 21st in Orlando, Florida. I will be doing a medical hypnotherapy specialty training, which leads then to for people who want to getting certified as a medical hypnotherapy specialty certification type thing. And that includes some extra hours after the conference, of course, uh, on Zoom that I'll be doing for people who want to get certified. Uh, that's that. And also they have a certified stress management consultant training coming up on uh, this October 1st and 2nd, just in a week or two. And that's Michael Watson, who is their trainer's trainer now. And that's definitely worth uh, doing if you'd like to add that feather in your cap to be a stress management consultant. And uh, they have just started a mentoring program, which I was in, uh, have been invited to participate in. So those of you who want an official mentor for six month type, type segments, they're going to be uh, putting that out there. If you aren't already an IACT or IMDHA member, that's, uh, I believe, just for members. And their, their website for more information about the conference and other things they're offering is, and you don't have to be a member for, you know, to take some of their trainings, which are excellent, in my opinion, uh, is iact.org or imdha.com. I will put that on, when I edit this, it'll be, all of the websites will be on here and you can go watch it on YouTube later if you want to pick it up again or call me and I'll give them to you. Uh, HEA is the Hypnosis Education Association. It is a not-for-profit Florida-based beautiful little group of hypnotists. It's a much smaller group than those international organizations, but it is my favorite little group and it's beautiful and we're, kind of, we're going to be having a conference coming up open to anybody. We get people even who aren't hypnotists just that want to learn and that's me. I want to learn uh, and that's going to be November 11th through the 13th in Orlando, Florida. And that's coming up. So uh, actually, we have a couple of people here that are going to be presenting, or one, actually. Wes Rocky's going to be there. And I believe, Michael, you're not doing this one, but maybe we can get you for the next one. Did you? Yeah. Hopefully. In, uh, and we do one in Florida. We have, Well, they're all in Florida, but we do one also in, um, in uh, Palm Harbor, Oldsmar area in, for our spring conference. We do a one-day conference, but this one is a two days plus a social on Friday night. So that is heahypnosis.com. They have some resources on that website for people, even if you're not a member. Okay, there's the business of the, ch that's our chapter meeting. So thank you for, for listening to that. So, um, oh, uh, the other thing, sorry, one more thing for the Hypnosis Education Association. Also, we started doing a Living Legends series. We did one with Larry Elman, Elman, who is Dave Elman's son, we did that was our first one. I booked him to do that because I thought, what better living legend to have? And the next one is now set. You're going to be the first ones to hear the date, October 21st. This is an online event for members only. And the little small membership fee each year, we're doing these online events because it's worth being a member, even if you can't come physically to the conference, the two conferences every year. And this one's going to be Shelly Stockwell on October 21st, 8.30 to 10. An hour and a half with Shelly Stockwell is worth the whole year's membership, in my opinion. So if you know who she is, that's the other announcement. And um, other things, you can go to my website to find out. I do a deep dive for hypnotists for more advanced training. I'm doing that about every other month. And that is uh, um, uphypnosis.com is, is my website. So let's get on with what we're here for. We're here to hear about, we're here to talk about forming the happiness habit. How many people in here are happy that I can see? Raise your hand. Everybody happy? Oh, Wes Rocky's so happy. He's coming up out of his chair. Yeah, you're all excited. And uh, you just all proved uh, a point I was going to make is that happiness is contagious. Yes. Right. So uh, we're all here. And when we see someone else happy, those mirror neurons that we know about now from science, you know, we didn't really need those back when Norman Vincent Peale was talking about positive thinking and all that good stuff. But you know what? We really do know that when we're around somebody that's happy, we tend to come up a little bit, if not a whole lot, in our happiness. That's one reason why I love this field. 
in general, and generalizations are generalizations for a reason, generally people in the hypnosis and the neurolinguistics fields are extremely happy people. They're positive. Being positive makes you more happy than being, you know what, the other way, right? So it's, it's a mindset, it's an attitude, and it's also a habit. We don't come out of the womb learning how not to be happy. Uh, we, so our surroundings and our environment can train us or program us or condition us, whatever words you want to use, to have a less than optimistic outlook, which can start to make you not as happy. And if that goes on long term, of course, we end up with the seminar I did a few months ago on when sadness turns to depression, because that also can become habit forming to have a negative outlook. So we're here to talk about positive outlooks. And, it, and I used to always say when I talked about being positive or people say, how can you be so up when everything's going crazy around you? I said, you know what? It's not that you're putting on a, a pair of rose colored glasses. If anybody remembers back in the 70s or 60s, we'd say, put on your rose colored glasses and everything looks rosy and you're ignoring reality. That's what that meant. That's not what this is. This is about actually having a, a higher awareness of what your surroundings are and what's going on around you. Because I really do believe that hypnosis and NLP make you more aware, more aware, not less aware. And that means you can focus on in the environment and in the in input, the billions of bits of incoming that you're getting. You can focus on those things that are going to allow you to be resourceful dealing with whatever's happening in your environment. The things that we can't control are the things that start to get us frustrated and then sometimes angry. When you get frustrated long enough, you usually get angry and you get a bitter attitude. And that all allows you not to be as happy as is possible. And it's so it's partly about being aware of what do I have the ability to make a difference about in my surroundings. I wanted to talk about uh, strategies for happiness. And I do want you all, I want input from people on these on these calls, even though it's a short webinar. If you have something you want to throw in, please, anytime, you won't hurt my feelings if you interrupt me, unless I lose my train of thought. And then someone in the group has to remind me where I left off and that that'll work. It's not because I'm going to be 71 next month. It's because I've been doing this all my life. <laughs> so that's not a, an excuse. Age is not an excuse. So to me, a strategy, one of the strategies that I incorporate with my clients and with everyone that I know is the strategy of, of starting your day, you know, set the tone when you start your day. When you first start your day, wake up and already have ready something that you're a, a ritual, right? Some kind of a ritual that you do, that you create a habit of doing that allows, allows you to start, you to start your day it. on the most upbeat, happy note possible. Because when you first wake up, you know, especially when you're in the, going through that light hypnotic stage and you're not quite awake yet, you know, you, you don't have all that other stuff in your head yet, hopefully, about the challenges in your life. So you can talk to yourself and do a few either uh, if you like the word mantra or if you like the word affirmation, a thought, a sentence, a word, something, a symbol maybe that can incorporate all of the above that you can train in that starts to be your habitual way of starting your day. Something that gets you pumped up, something that gets you, and I like that word up, of course, because that's the name of my company. And the up stands for, the UP in up is for unlimited possibilities. And when we still have a clear mind first thing in the morning, we can usually be aware of more possibilities than when we start getting all that clutter later as the day goes on. So I think of it as having, having a mantra or a, or a starting point to set the tone for your day. Like today is going to be a great day, regardless what happens, I'm going to get through it and make the most of it and learn whatever I can from those things that are different than the way I probably would have liked for them to have been. Or something, you know, just something that you can put on a little piece of paper to maybe have on your mirror when you're getting ready. And those, those may sound like silly things, but they're very important to remind you when you're setting a habit, when you're training in a new habit, I like to give a six week project to things. I don't know where I came up with the six weeks. It's as random as saying it takes 21 days to create a new habit because hypnotists know that people come in with a habit of smoking and they go out with a new habit of being a non-smoker in one session. So that didn't take 21 days. And I could give you 
a lot of other, you know, examples of why I don't believe that. But, you know, we have to have templates for life. And, and then when it gets repeated enough times, people that think it should take 21 days, guess what happens? It's going to take 21 days, because if that's what you expect, that's kind of like hypnotizing yourself to say, well, I'm going to learn to make this a habit. It's going to take 21 days because your unconscious part of your mind, or if you call it subconscious, whatever your word is for it, it's going to follow whatever your belief systems are. So I like to have unlimited belief systems. So if someone puts a limit or a number like takes 21 days. The first thing I do is I say, well, maybe. <laughs> Maybe you've found that or your research has shown that with a lot of people. And yet there, you know, I'm going to keep a whole lot of space open beyond that opinion and say, you know, there may be some other ideas or other possibilities there. And I think that's a good way to live life. Always look for more possibilities rather than getting locked in on something and, and closing the door to everything else that might be available. So waking up with a positive note, I think is a good ritual. The other thing, of course, we know we drift through, those of you that are hypnotists here, that we drift through the hypnotic brainwave state when we fall asleep. So right as you're getting ready to fall asleep, after you get rid of some of the clutter, hopefully from your day, it's nice to have a little ritual to go to sleep to as well. And I do this with clients, I do it with myself. So before sleep, one of the nice things you could do to get to start forming a, a even happier habit than most of you already seem to have because you all seem like you already are happy and have that habit but you can always be happier I figure right why not if you can why not yeah look at Ron he's happy <laughs> you got a beautiful background there Ron that makes me happy just looking at that I like that so another thing you can do is is gratitude and if people don't like writing journals or they that doesn't, you know, turn them on or float their boat or whatever you want to say, you know, uh, if clients like it, I think it's very powerful to write out a few things from your day that you are grateful for, that you're happy about, the, the, the little happy moments, to review those things. And if nothing else, as you're drifting off to sleep, you can bring back some of the little happy moments from your day or little things that you're grateful for. And, and that's a beautiful way to fall asleep. It's also a nice way to start programming your dreams to be positive and productive and happy and interesting and all of that, because you can program your dreams. Some of you may already know that. Maybe I'll do a free webinar on that one of these days. So the other thing is, what about the time in between that beautiful wake up, I'm going to be happy today, and that going to sleep, I'm grateful for when I was happy today. You know, what about all those hours in between? That's when we have a lot of ability to affect our environment, don't we? And the environment, it's at certain times in my life, uh, there were times when the environment I found included some sounds that were less than happy sounds. Sometimes those sounds I had control over, sometimes I didn't. Uh, sometimes it includes people. And again, sometimes you have people that aren't necessarily adding to your happiness that you interact with during your day that you don't have control over. And sometimes you actually do have control over how, how, how much time you spend in the presence of people who are miserable. You ever, y'all ever know somebody that after a while, after knowing them, when you see them, you almost don't want to say, so how you doing? Because <laughs> right? you know what's going to come next. And it's not going to be something that's going to be something you want to listen to or be happy about. So, and not that we don't care about those people, but, you know, sometimes people end up wanting you to be as unhappy as they are. And that's where we can draw the line and create our own environment to protect ourselves from those people by just either uh, all kinds of techniques in hypnosis that we can do to create a separation between us and the person we're having to interact with who isn't being very pleasant, right? Some of you know some of those techniques. So um, that's, that's one way we can kind of control our environment. Uh, places that you are often, that you have some control over the environment, colors, lighting, scents, things like that. Some people are more into some of those things than others. Just, just even in the colors you decide to wear for a particular day. Uh, the way that you create your environment of your office or your or your room at home, your rooms at home that you have control over, those kinds of things can really add to your happiness level. There's been all kinds of science on color therapy. So we know that colors affect people 
uh, at a visceral level, at, at an emotional level, just by being in the presence of a certain color. So those are things that you can that you can change and that you can affect in your environment. When I, I had a job uh, in between my two careers in California where I was having to drive for the first time in morning and afternoon, big traffic in Los Angeles. Boy, if I had if I had to get initiated in traffic, that was the place to do it. And I got to tell you, at first it was fun. I actually got kind of excited about it. It was fun. I'd get up and I had all, I was all excited and everybody was all kind of, you know, uh, driving their cars and jockeying for positions at the, at the lights. And I, I was kind of getting into it. And I always loved driving. So I just made it, you know, made it fun. But I noticed after a few months, <laughs> maybe less, that I noticed, because uh, it was about a 35, 40 minute drive to my, where I was working in between there, that I started noticing I was gripping the steering wheel a little harder. And one day it occurred to me that I was really uh, getting stressed out without realizing it sometimes on a, on a conscious level. But I started noticing things. So I thought, what can I change? And the first thing I did was I found this beautiful little radio station. It was called the Wave Station. So that gives you some idea of what this station was. And it was these beautiful instrumentals and instantly changed the environment of my car. The traffic was still there. The, uh, the uh, people jockeying for positions and all the crazy. And the other thing I changed that I had the ability to change was I left 10 minutes early. And because I, I realized it was starting to affect me. So I changed my time, which was in my control. And I changed the atmosphere inside my car to listen to that nice music. And it made all the difference in the world instantly. So I couldn't change the outside world. I changed the inner world. And that's where we have control. So uh, pe the people that you're around, again, are very important. Ask yourself what kind of people and social situations and maybe some groups or clubs that you belong to, what kind are you attracted to? And those of you that work with clients, these are good questions to ask them if they're having an issue with happiness, is to say, what, what, what do you surround yourself with? And again, sometimes we don't have choice for whatever reason, for maybe a segment of time or some area of our life where we can't change something for now, but we can change in here and we can help our clients change inside of their mind how they decide to think about these this person or these people that I have to interact with because of whatever reason. And that's the nice thing about the conditioning, the reflex conditioning and all these things we know how to do is that we can form that new habit very quickly just by deciding to, again, creating that intention and then starting to starting to change some things. Because if you're going to change, you, you change the thought first, right? Starts with a thought, a decision. Then you set an intention. Uh, someone's coming here. And then you have to act. That's the next step. And the part, the part that we have control over again is making the decision of what we choose to do and then creating that intention and then repetition. Sometimes it does take a few days. When I looked up on the internet for this, uh, for this particular webinar, how long does it take, you know, just to see what everybody's opinion was about, how long does it take to set a, a new habit? And it went everywhere from, you know, six weeks to you know, three months to six months. I mean, it was all over the map, of course, because it's it's not just one answer to that question. The answer is how motivated are you and how much do you want it, which is the same thing, I guess. How much do you want this? How committed are you to doing what it takes, to acting on what it takes? And we know with hypnosis and self-hypnosis and NLP and some of these uh, areas of that we that we are all trained in, that we can very quickly inside of ourselves create a new habit. And we can shift some maybe limiting beliefs we have about that 21 days to create a new habit. I decided when I first heard that many, many decades ago that I didn't buy it. I just decided, I, I think that's some random number somebody came up with because it seemed right for a few things that they'd maybe experimented with. And then it, it hadn't even occurred to me for a few decades where that had come from. And every once in a while I said, I wonder where that came from. And I was reading something and I found out to my, much to my surprise, that it was Maxwell Maltz. <laughs> Are some of you familiar with Maxwell Maltz? Psycho-Cybernetics, you can tell this is an old book. Uh, 1960, I think is when this was copyrighted. And I've had this book since, at least since the 
early 70s when I started reading about all these things. And Maxwell Maltz, evidently, but he was talking about he was talking about the 21 day thing. And in that, when he wrote that book, and it's all about self image psychology and what he had determined, he was a, by the way, if you haven't read Psycho Cybernetics, it is a phenomenal book. It's an old book, but it is one of those that life changing it can be, because he was a plastic surgeon, and he got interested in self image psychology, because he was noticing that people that he would you know, change their looks completely, and their whole personality would be transformed. And then there were other people where he would change their looks dramatically, and they absolutely were the, exactly the same and would look in a mirror and say, well, yeah, I know that I look different, but, but, I, but I'm still the same. And their personality wouldn't change whatsoever. And sometimes he would find they didn't even, they wouldn't even see the changes even though everyone around them said, oh my gosh, you look so different. You look so much better. And they wouldn't see it. They were still seeing that person who they felt themselves to be on the inside. So self-image psychology is what, what Maxwell Maltz kind of created that whole field. And psycho was the first book. I think there were two or three after that. But the next one, I think, is uh, the uh, self-image. It's about uh, self-image psychology is part of the title i'm not if anybody knows shout it out but i don't remember the whole title um but but it's really interesting so who if we think of ourselves as a happy positive person and if we train that in we start working th with some of the things we know to do and start making it part of our everyday thought patterns guess what's going to happen our self-image will will match up to that because all of your actions all of your feelings all of your behaviors and even your abilities that surface when you need them, they all always are consistent with your self-image. This is important to know for those of us who are working with clients. We want to know who do they think they are? Who do you think you are? <laughs> who do you think you are? So whoever you think yourself to be and whatever you think is possible for you, even if there is more beyond that, your your not going to be displaying the behaviors or the feelings or the habits or anything of, of what you're really capable of if you have a limited belief about who you are, about your self-image. I always say the strongest beliefs when I teach hypnosis, the strongest beliefs a person has are the beliefs that are held what we call at the level of identity, literally who they think themselves to be. And that's why we have processes in hypnosis and neurolinguistics and things where you take on someone else's personality for a while. There's a there's a fairly new, some of you have been in classes with me lately, have heard me talk about this fairly new thing that, that everybody's so excited about. And it's um, deep trance identification, right? Where you put someone into a deep trance, whatever that means. Uh, for the person that wrote, that made this up. And, and then you get them to take on the mannerisms, the gestures, the voice, the belief systems, the attitudes, everything. You talk them through the whole thing of being a certain person that they admire or that they you know, want to emulate a little bit. And then when you bring them out of the trance, they are that person and they speak differently. And when you talk to them after this process, people will say, I felt like that person. Now, here's, here's the thing. Do they really know what that person felt like or feels like? You know, everybody wants to be Milton Erickson in the hypnosis world, right? Do they really know what Milton Erickson was thinking or what he felt like? Of course not. I call it because my former career for 20 years in the 70s and 80s, I was an actor. I was a singer and an actor. I was in show business. I call that method acting. We can do that without going, in, in my opinion, this again, I can only tell you my opinion, but we can go into... Uh, our creative imagination. We don't have to be in a deep, deep, deep somnambulistic trance, in my opinion. But you can you can pretend like you did when you were a kid if you give yourself permission and close your eyes and look in the mirror and imagine you know nobody around maybe, and imagine that you are uh, the person that you think you need to be to accomplish the goal that you have, or to be the happiest person imaginable. And then you can start to take on those mannerisms. How would I stand? How would I talk? How would I think? How, how would I think about myself? How would I think about the world and other people? And then you can open your eyes and look in the mirror and just perform as that person. 
It's method acting. Yeah. But it's, but you know what it does? Your body likes those feelings. And in order for you to act a certain way, when you pretend, your mind has to find those characteristics within you. Right? So when it's, while it's finding those characteristics within you, and while you're feeling really good and happy, your mind always wants you to be in the most positive, healthy, strong state possible. So it's going to start accessing those things and making them a part of your everyday attitude and everyday beliefs. And, and it'll be who you be, who you decide to recreate yourself to be. And of course, I'm saying yourself, knowing all of you already know all these things, but you know, our clients may not, and we can help other people to learn how to take on those characteristics and make, and it's not being fake or phony. It's being who they really are when they unleash their inner happy person. When they get rid of some of the heaviness of maybe some guilt or some some uh, bitterness or some old anger or some limiting beliefs or whatever it is that they're holding on to that is keeping them from being as happy as is possible. Because we're still only going to be as happy as is possible, right? But there's usually, in my opinion, a lot more possible than what we think. And Jessica, you didn't get to introduce yourself and neither did Buzz. So I'm going to just... Really quickly, because I'm I have to send in a roster. I found out, so I've got to find out who. Now I know you're. I know who you are, but the rest of them may not. So Jessica, you want to quickly just who you are and where you're from, because it's a short seminar. We're not going into anything else today. Sure, hypnotherapist Jessica L. Hansen in Wilmer, Minnesota. Sorry, I'm in my basement sewing, listening right now, but I'm also a uh, hypnosis instructor. So that's right, you are. And I love. That's right, you are, and. Uh, she's the other one who's going to be, that's on this call, besides Wes Rocky, Jessica is going to be a presenter in Orlando in November at the Hypnosis Education Association, aren't you? Yes, you are. Because, you know, I bring people, I'm the president this year, so I'm getting people that I want to spend time with. I'm surrounding my environment with people that make me happy, you know, so if anybody wants to have that kind of ability beyond uh, your day-to-day -day life, uh, we are looking for a new vice president this year. So, <laughs> Michael, keep that in mind. Uh, Ron, keep that in mind, you know. And the vice president, you know, you know, vice presidents, they never work as hard as the president, right? Except when I was vice president, then it was a whole different story, but that's okay, too. <laughs> but it's not work, it's play. So, and Buzz, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Where are you coming from? Do you have, you must not have the mic on. Yeah, we can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you, can you pantomime where you're from? <laughs> okay, maybe not Buzz. Boy, I was excited to hear where Buzz is from because I don't know you. So maybe you can email there me. He there he is. is. Oh, Oklahoma. Is that right? Oklahoma? Okay, see? Is that what that means? Yes? Okay. So, because, um, you know, we, we like to be all friends here and expand our our network of, of wonderful people that we can all learn from, because I'm here to learn too. So anybody have any comments or anything yet so far? This goes so fast. We've got like 25 minutes left, but Rocky, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Patty, I'm I mean, so Wes, excited. Sorry. I called you Rocky. <laughs> Wes. You, you call me anything. I'm always reacting. Rocky. <laughs> I'm reacting to your heart, not my name. Patty, it's fantastic mentioning about the method acting because as you know i am the passionate improviser so this yeah. is it but my question is how do you make sure that when you are teaching somebody to have this upbeat affirmation of waking up happy that it is not a resistance or denial of the reality well, uh, let me ask you back. When you first wake up in the morning, like I said, if you don't have a whole lot of your life, you know, situations in your mind yet, and you first wake up and you have some kind of an affirmation like, uh, this is going to be a great day, or I'm going to, I'm going to make this the most happy day possible or something like that. Where do you think the resist, if, if that's your intention, the person's intention, why would, where would there be resistance? Well, you know, what's from your me thoughts? For, for me, the only affirmation I'm using right now is yes. And yes. this is my version of happiness. But if somebody, you know, it's very sick and it's 
waking up to pain and hoping that this morning may not be pain free, but it is even more painful. And then, you know, making happy thoughts may be kind of Tylenol approach. Yeah. And of, and of course, it's individualized. You know, we're talking generally a happy attitude because we all know there's times when ha being happy is not appropriate even. It's not, it's not appropriate and it's not going to help us get through things. Um, there, uh, all the emotions are, uh, are useful at different times. But I'm talking about as a general forming the happiness habit, you're still going to be getting through whatever that pain, whatever that uh, challenge, if it's a health issue, you're still going to be, as you know, as I know you know, and probably everybody else on this, on this uh, call, that when you are in a in a more positive, optimistic mode, that you're going to heal better, that you're going to have less discomfort if you're in a more positive frame, right? So it's this is about just forming the habit so that when you do have those life challenges, which everybody will have, some a whole lot worse than others, and different times in our lives they come, then then you will already have be stronger to face it, to deal with it, to come to come up to the challenge, whatever it is. That and I know you know that, like I said, but yeah, if someone's got pain, then of course we're gonna we're gonna help them in some other ways. And there are things we can do, you know, with the the thing about before they go to sleep too, to incorporate some post-hypnotic suggestions and some pre-hypnotic, meaning sleep suggestions, things they can be uh maybe thinking or repeating to themselves before they fall asleep to kind of set the tone and in, to pro to I keep using the word program because that just seems to fit, but to condition the mind to know that when I wake up in the morning, I intend, my intention is I'm going to start with a better attitude. I'm going to start stronger than I was yesterday morning, and I'm going to be more optimistic, and I'm going to, going to see what else maybe, because see, the more, the more happy and, and optimistic someone is again the clearer the mind will be to see other possibilities or other options that right. might be open to them about their condition or their pain or their disease that they may not notice while they're absorbed in that stress of of being unhappy unhappiness just closes closes down the awareness of what might be available to them and happiness if you just decide you're going to be as happy as possible, like I said, that doesn't mean you're going to be laughing through the funeral that's coming up. You know, that doesn't mean you're going to be laughing while you're going through a root canal at your dentist's office and whatever. Although I do giggle when I come out of the dentist's office because I use, I use hypnotic sedation and they think I'm a little crazy. I think they think I use laughing gas or something. But I'm not going to tell you I'm having fun <laughs> in there, but I'm making it as positive as is possible. And with these techniques, it can be pretty, it surprises me just how positive it can be because our imagination can go anywhere at once while they're working on our mouth or while we're, you know, having those things. Joe, you got something to add? Yeah, Thank I'm not a real good at this at all, but uh, I used to go to the work in a mine, copper mine. Yeah. We had to be there 12 hours a day. It, it really didn't much matter how we felt that day, but. I always had the attitude that, hey, I'm going to come in here. I don't have a good time. Uh, I've seen people in there. That it's, uh, their face is like all day long, 12 hours. I mean, how they do that, I got no clue. Exactly. Uh, exactly. We're in the same mind, same environment. The companies, I mean, some people are focused on, well, the company's doing this. My boss is doing that. My boss didn't always make stuff, you know, decisions I agreed with. But nonetheless, there's his decisions to make. And I just, okay, well, I got to do what I got to do. And I go on about my day. Beautiful. I so love that. Pleasant. Love that. Are you a hypnotist? Are you trained in Work, working at it? Working at it. Good. We all are. Few, few, <laughs> I've been uh, working at it all my life. With, uh, <laughs> I love it. Had a few online courses with Leda Hofsky and a little bit with Wendy Friesen, uh, stuff like that. And then my dad brought, introduced me to it when I was a kid. But I'm getting a little more serious about it now. Good, good. Well, you got a few people on this call that can probably help you with some of those new ideas for all of those things, right? Uh, you reminded me of a quote that I'd written down earlier. It's one of my favorite quotes. And I, I'm uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, I seem to remember this as Mark Twain. Uh, Most people are about as happy as they make up their mind to be. 
Yep. It's a great quote. It's a great quote. And it's so simple. And, you know, people forget that they have the ability to change their mind instantly. You know, if they're thinking about something that's going on in their life that makes them miserable all day long, they're going to be like those 12 hours in the in the mind, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to be miserable the whole time. Exactly. And it may not be a fun experience to be in a mind for 12 hours. I, I think I'd get a little maybe claustrophobic or something. I don't know. I'd be like, let's get some fresh, pit. Some fresh air. Pit. We, we, weren't, we weren't stuck in a, in a tunnel. We were open. Oh, pit. you weren't. Oh, okay. But, but, you know, there's some things, like I said, that we end up having to do for whatever reason. You know, we, we weigh the consequences versus the value of what we're going to do. And and we decide to be in certain situations, like getting dental work done is a good example. We, we can avoid it if we want to, but usually down the line, it's just going to make things worse. So we make those decisions in life. And once we've made a decision to go through, I, I worked with uh, someone recently who was having problems uh, getting an MRI done. And I'm, some of you may have worked with these kinds of things. And it was a situation where they freaked out so much they couldn't do it. Uh, so they called me and on a referral and said, you know, I've, I've got to get this done and I've got to get through it. And they knew how long it was going to take. They knew the situation. They knew everything. So, you know, we, we can take that information and create a different mindset and put our imagination in a different place while that's going on. Because you know what? That takes care of itself. We don't have to do anything once we're in there. Once the dentist gets their hands in our mouth, there's nothing for us to do. We got ourselves there. We made the decision. We set the goal with our logical conscious mind, which is part of its job. And now that we're sitting in the chair, our I think our responsibility is to, if we have these skills, as much as possible, make it as pleasant and interesting and everything is, and go as fast as is possible. And I've always been surprised. I, I had oral, I had, uh, excuse me, they corrected me, periodontal surgery, two and a half hours of periodontal surgery a few years, about three or four years ago now, I guess it's been. And I, I did an interview a while later with the periodontist and he was, you know, in the, in the interview, I found out even more about what was going on with him. And it was fun because he said, he literally used the word shocked. He was shocked. That, that there was, he said there was no bleeding. Now, I didn't know that part. I always heard you can control bleeding with, to a certain extent with hypnosis. I had heard that from my early training, but he said there was no bleeding. And he said he had, he had the, the, the needle ready. He knew he was gonna have to give me the anesthetic and he never did. He said the cap was off of it the whole time. And he said he was shocked that he didn't have to use it. And I didn't use any pain. I didn't take any pain medication post surgery, and it, it was just. And it, it amazes me when it works. It still amazes me after thirty years of being a hypnotherapist and studying in another twenty before that. So, so we have abilities. Our body and our mind and our imagination working together can do things to make us happy. And once we set, like I said, if you make it like a like a goal, like a project, like for the next whatever weeks, uh, or or make it one week even you will have amazing things that will just seem to come to you just because you set your focus on it and made it a priority and intention and a priority that your unconscious mind will start to pick up on all kinds of things that you have control over changing or thinking differently about in order to be happier than you had been dealing with those things or being in those places. And it's like I said, it's about opening up your awareness to more possibilities. That's what all of this work does in my opinion. So the thing about, uh, I, I like to think of having, you know, for different phases of life kind of themes or, or uh, points of focus or however you want to think of it, uh, I tend to have a theme for my entire life that has evolved through the years. And it has evolved to come, uh, come to one thing. Uh, Wes, you were talking about you have that one word that you use. Yes. Yes. That that word, your unconscious mind, because of all the work you've done and all, I know all you, what you do. I don't know all you do, but I know something about the way you think and the way you approach this work. That you know that one word is extremely powerful because it, it encompasses a whole universe of concepts and ideas and strategies and all kinds of things that that word yes represents at the unconscious level, right? That's the way I think of having a theme for either a phase of your life that you're wanting to get through or for just life in general. And my current theme for my life is up. It's that mm. up symbol. It's everywhere. 
And it stands for unlimited possibilities and a whole lot more, but I've used it for many, many years, well, 30 years since I started my company, but I always like that word up. I mean, just it's a metaphorical way to lift up. You know, if you're feeling down and you stand up and you look up in the air and you raise your arms up in the air and you start laughing, even if it's fake, your body's going to start feeling better. You're going to start releasing some of those feel good chemicals and hormones in your body and you're going to feel better. And people say, but that's phony. Well, not if I feel better. (laughs) I really do feel better. You know, fake it till you make it. Remember that old phrase? There's a reason we have these phrases. But but again, I think we're responsible to keep ourselves as happy as possible in any situation because, you know, it protects our organism. It allows our organism to function more, more fully and to heal faster and to think clearer and all of that. Our brain can think more clearly when we're in a positive state. So my, my license plate says, think up. Since I moved to Florida uh, 20 years ago, I got a plate that says, think up. So it's, it's a con- everywhere I look, there's constant reminders if I'm having a bad day or it starts to go in the wrong direction. Somebody's got their microphone on and there's people, a bunch of people in the background talking. I don't know who it is, but if you know it's you, please mute your microphone. Thank you. <laughs> I was starting to hear <laughs> I was, I was getting interested, actually. I was getting distracted with, what are they talking about? Um, where was I? So uh, to have that theme, but to, but to have that up symbol everywhere I look, that that idea of thinking up, I think that's where I left off. So I love affirmations. Does anybody in here not like affirmations? Because, you know, every once in a while, I'm sure you've had this happen, those of you that work with clients. Once in a while, I'll get a client and I'll bring up the idea of affirmations or mantras or whatever you want to, words you want to use. And they'll say, you know, I did those once. I, I don't really like them. They don't really work, you know. And I say, well, if you did them once, it's kind of like going to the gym once. Probably it's not going to have a major effect on your, on your life if you only go once or do it for a short term. But I, but I said, you know, here, here's a reframe, right? We're always reframing things for our clients. So if they say they don't like affirmations, what I'm going to do is after listening to their story that they told me about all their things that they're dealing with, I'm going to start repeating back to them things they have said in the pre-talk, in the interview, things like, well, you told me that you've never been able to blank. You told me that you're the kind of person that blank. And uh, every time you lose weight, you gain it back. You know, I, And I'm going to start repeating these little sentences that I heard them say, because those are, and then I'll, I'll enlighten them. It's a reframe. I'll say, those are your affirmations. Every time you think those things, every time you say those things, and it, it, a lot of clients... I had one the other day that within less than five minutes, they had one little statement that they said, I swear, seven or eight times in less than less than three minutes, I think it was. And the statement was, I have no life. I have no life. What an affirmation to walk around with. And if they said it that many times to me who they'd never met before in that little short conversation, can you imagine how many times during the day they, they repeat that? And they were laughing when they said it. Oh, I have no life, you know, but you know what? The unconscious mind still hears it and it still is going to take that as a theme for how you view yourself in your life. I have no life. I thought, what a horrible thing to walk around thinking and saying all day long. So, you know, the other thing about this kind of work is that it'll make you more aware of what you're, what's coming out of your mouth. And, you know, we're pretty good usually at hearing it from our clients, but sometimes not so much at hearing it from ourselves because their habits, which means a hab- by definition, a habit is unconscious, right? So if it's a habit, if it's already a habit, we're not aware of it. But if somebody points it out to us, like we do with our clients, or like I do with myself when I listen back and start editing these videos, and I go, oh my gosh, Patty, stop saying that. You know, Can you believe you said that that many times? And, and once we're aware, though, now we can start to change it, can't we? Because you can't change something if you don't even know that it's happening or that it's a problem. So awareness is a big, a big thing. And guess what you can do when you go to sleep at night? I love to do things like this. You can ask your unconscious mind to make you more aware tomorrow when I wake up happier than I was yesterday, to make me more aware of when I'm thinking thoughts or saying things that are interfering with me being as happy, healthy, and positive as possible. 
You can say things like that as you're going to sleep. And guess what your mind is going to do when you wake up the next day? You're going to start noticing things. You say more. I did this with memory when I was working on uh, remembering names many, many years ago. I found out you can just, we forget we can ask our own mind to help us with something. If we don't know how to do it or we don't know really what we need to do, we just ask for help from that part of our mind that is that inner intelligence. I think of it as our higher intelligence inside of us that has access to a whole lot more, in my opinion, in my belief system, beyond myself, that energetic field that people have different names for, that we seem to get information from when it isn't available in the hard and fast physical realm. We know that we still get information from beyond that. So at least the people I hang out with usually know that. But, you know, we may have different ways we, we interpret those things, but it, it's still there. And, and when we ask our mind to help us with something, it's pretty amazing how it will start to show us new ways to think, new ways to talk, new ways to describe ourselves, new ways to think about our possibilities. So, oh boy, we're running out of time here. So mantras and affirmations. Uh, ask yourself, what do I spend most of my time doing, my waking hours? What do I spend most of my time doing? And when you ask yourself that, listen to what the answer is. Uh, something that I was going to show real quickly, because we're almost out of time, is something I dug up from the archives of what I used to give clients way back in the old days. And I haven't done this in a while, but it, it came to my into my awareness, and hopefully you can see that. I'm going to try to enlarge it a little bit. Anyway, it's called an energy inventory. It's a little sheet. It's it's one of one of the handouts that I used to give when I first started hypnosis. And it's very simple terms. It's got two sides. It's got a positive energy side. And underneath that, it says you stress, right? EU stress, because that's what positive stress is. And then the negative energy side on the other side, it says distress, distress, right? And I would say, take this home and write down the things in your life today that stress you and put those on the stress side, the, on the negative side. And then on the positive side, put down any, and, and it could, the, the stress side could be things like traffic, uh, an annoying boss, an annoying employee, um, uh, raining every day lately. It could be anything that's been that's been stressing you even just a little bit. So anything that's a negative, uh, that, that is less than neutral is a negative. Is It still stresses your, your organism. And then on the other side, to put in the things that give you pleasure. Um, going to the beach, uh, taking my walk every morning, my, my dog that, that I play with every day. You know, it can be just anything in your life that adds positive energy to your life. And then look at what the lists look like and look at uh, every day or every week, maybe take it out and see what can I add to the positive side? What do I have the ability to add? And what is something on that negative energy side that I have the ability to do something about? Like I did with the traffic in LA. I had the ability to change the environment of my car, to leave 10 minutes earlier, all the little things that I did that made all the difference in my stress level for that one thing. And it ends, ended up being on the other side then. So uh, it's just a nice, simple little thing, little, little project that you can do yourself or give to clients to help them. And if anybody wants a copy of these things that I show, by the way, you can email me at uphypnosis at yahoo.com or uphypnosis at outlook.com. And I'll uh, send you some of the things that I have. I also have a, a, a handout from a seminar. I did a longer seminar on forming the happiness habit. If you'd like to have that, I'll be happy to send that to you as well. And it may have that energy inventory in there. I'm not sure if it does or not. So anybody have any comments? We're getting down to the bottom of the, uh, down to the end here. Anything, uh, any questions, any comments, anything you'd like to add that you do with happiness? Because happiness really is a habit. And if you aren't as happy as you want to be, that means you have the ability to, to do something to change it so that you are as happy as you want to be. And again, it doesn't mean you're going to be laughing through inappropriate things that aren't happy situations. It means you're going to be stronger to deal with them. You're going to be stronger to get through those life challenges. Anybody? You, you yeah, Joe. Yeah. Even if you yeah, go yeah. in there with that wonderful attitude, there's things that happens in everybody's life and day that just causes minor irritations. 
Yeah. Uh, and, and what I do is I just don't sit there and focus on that and dwell on it all day. Yeah. I do whatever I need to do about it and then go on to whatever, something else, anything. So that's a, a habit or a strategy that's turned into a habit for you. For you, it's just the way, it's the way you function, right? That's the way you deal with it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And those of us that are working, you know, with clients that are hypnotists, we know that a lot of clients don't, they don't know how they, they would listen to you say that and say, how do you do that? <laughs> how do you let that little stuff go? Because it really is. It's the little things that build up, right? And I have, a, it's a whole other seminar, pivotal response conditioning thing that I've, that I've developed through the years that I teach my clients. And I tell them, start with those little bitty annoying things, the things that you might only be annoyed for two or three minutes about, and then you'd forget it. And see how fast you can shift off them. Like you said, get your mind up, you know, take care of it if there's something to do about it. Because what frustrates people is when they're thinking about something they have no control over, like traffic, you know, or like like the annoying person in the line at the grocery store and you're in a hurry and they got an extra thing or they got to do a price check, you know, those things that we don't have control over, but we have control over our attitude about it, which is just what you were saying, Joe. So that's beautiful. You've already developed your, your strategy to let that little stuff go. But a lot of people don't know how to do that. So we can help them with that. And, and everybody can. Yeah, Ron. Well, you well know that uh, I have a pretty big challenge in my life. And what it changed in me is the idea that I... Uh, I appreciate every day more than I ever did before. I appreciate every breath I take. So when I get up in the morning, I focus on my first breath, my first conscious breath, and uh, I enjoy it. I think about how grateful I am to be alive. And then I think about what is it that I want to accomplish for the day? I want to have that day have some, have some purpose nice. uh, in my life and uh, for what I have left. So it's, uh, it's, uh, I'm a pretty happy guy considering the challenge uh, that I'm faced with. And I look at other people that I know that uh, they're totally freaking out and they have no quality of life. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, they, every moment uh, they, and you know, they don't care what I have to say. They don't care. They're just like freaking out. And they have no idea that uh, that they're wasting what they have. Yeah. So, so it's, then, I yeah. can't change it. So back to what you said is, I can't change it. It is what it is. So, um, uh, I just look at what can I do to enjoy every moment. And right. It's precious. Yeah, because again, everybody gets challenges in our lives, you know, and. It, if we're here, I had I went through a really one of the only, thankfully, uh, well, there was a couple of them, but I don't think about them anymore, so I forget about them. Uh, but there was a there was a phase of my life where I I was really in a down state at one point, and I was so down that I realized my generally before that optimistic attitude was really taking a beating, and I one day just decided to create this before I got into hypnosis or anything. I decided to create a statement and I sat down and I started writing, how do I want to start my day? Mm -hmm. And what do I want to, my mindset to at least start my day out? Cause I was just really going in a downward spiral and it wasn't getting turned around. So this was the first thing I did actively to start to turn it around. And it really worked better than I expected. And I wrote it on a little three by five card and put it on my mirror. And I would sit and read that every morning. And I still remember the mantra. It, it started very short and then it got longer, but it's, but it's um today brings Unique and interesting experiences and opportunities that will never happen again. Be there. That was what I wrote. Because interesting and unique was as positive as I could think at that point. <laughs> I couldn't say I'm going to be happy today. No, I wasn't going to. That wouldn't be congruent for where I was. I was in a horrible downward spiral. But to say today is going to bring interesting and unique you know, experiences and opportunities, my mind could wrap around that and say, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to be there for them. I'm going to be there for that. And it just, I couldn't believe how it was dramatic, how fast I started getting back in that upward spiral, thankfully. But, you know, it's not always easy to know what's the one thing that's going to turn you, turn you around. So strategies and mantras and affirmations and 
playing games in your head, pretending you're being silly, whatever it takes sometimes, right? Anybody else have something to add before we go? Wes? Yeah, to echo Ron, I heard from the teacher that if your only prayer is to say thank you, it's enough. Right. That gratitude, I'm telling you, being thankful, like, like Ron said, for every moment, every breath. And I, I started saying something a few years ago when people would, uh, as I became a senior and I started going to the VFW and places and people kind of say silly things there. And I would say, you know, if I wake up in the morning and I take a breath, there must be more for me to do. You know, same thing, more to experience, more to do, something to learn, somebody to meet new that I can enjoy, like some of you here today. And I can be in this in this one hour with you today. This is this is more precious to me than everything else I did today. So thank you all for being here, for for sharing your thoughts and ideas. Jessica, I know she's she's uh, kind of taken up thank with you. what she's doing. Thank you. And your name again was um, Linda. Tony. What Tony? is it? Tony. 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 You're the one that's uh, working with Jessica. Yeah, you're very very lucky to have her as your as your teacher. So, are you getting certified in hypnosis right now? Yes, I am. I just started um, the beginning of September, and I'm very very excited. She's an That's, awesome teacher, and I can tell you, I've been doing this thirty years, and I was studying professionally and studying at thirty before twenty before that. It just keeps getting better, doesn't it, everybody? Okay. You all know. Oh, yeah. Thank it you. Does. Thank you very much for coming. Hope you'll come back again. If you send me your email, I'll put you on the list so that you get all the notices. And uh, hope I see all of you again soon. Thank you, Patty. Take Thanks, care. Patty. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye-bye.